Now, the first of what we hope will be uh, many congressional corners, actual sit-down interviews with your representatives in Washington. We begin with Louise Slaughter. She is in our area this week and added a stop to her uh, to her schedule to our studios. We talked at length about a number of subjects, many of which uh, came from you, the viewer. Here's the first part of our conversation. We're joined in studio right now by Congressman Louise Slaughter. She is in town for uh, a special screening of uh, a documentary called Resistance, taking a look at uh, antibiotic use uh, in farm animals. And uh, she's going to be uh, featured in it. She's featured yeah. in it, and we'll be discussing it this week as well, right? Absolutely. It's legislation that I've been carrying for many terms. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think people understand that 80% of the antibiotics produced in the United States are fed every day mm -hmm. to poultry and livestock. Uh, not because they're ill, because you don't do that every day, but so that they can live in some pretty unspeakable conditions on a lot of the big agribusiness farms. Uh, and because they, they found that it makes them a little heavier mm -hmm. and they can get more from the market. It's a terrible thing. Uh, and I think it's going to become an international trade issue because Denmark at first really cut out the antibiotics uh, found it was much better for them, much less expensive, uh, but, but that they produced a higher yield mm -hmm. uh, and that the animals weren't sick all the time. Do you think that there is growing consumer demand for animals that are not fed antibiotics? Absolutely. I know that there is a, a number of local farms that uh, raise an animals God without them, antibiotic yes. use. And, and Wegmans right. and really carry some good products, Applegate and, and others. Chipotle is a restaurant mm -hmm. uh, that for years has not used the antibiotics. My aspect, I'm a microbiologist. My great concern is the resistant bacteria that that overuse has caused. Right. And that where, right now there are types of uh, tuberculosis and gonorrhea we have no, no cures for. Right. So uh, you're, and you're in Within 10 years, if we were to keep going where we are now, scientists tell us that strep throat could be fatal. And that great breakthrough, the most wonderful thing to give us the comfort that we could deal with epidemics and, and outbreaks right. is going to be useless to us. And so it's, it's really, we've reached critical mass now, and there are over 450 outside scientific and um, medical groups and consumer groups that are helping us, over 50 cities, city councils who said they do not want that anymore uh, in, in their areas and certainly in the schools. You know, you're here to talk about that at the screening mm -hmm. of this film, but you're also, um, and we appreciate you being here to, to answer questions. Yes. Um, I think a lot of people want to know what you think about uh, emails and the, you know, Hillary Clinton situation. Yeah. Should she have used, um, not used, a private email? And, and how should she well, handle this now so that it so that it doesn't haunt her as she heads into right. Well, my understanding is she's turned over 55,000 pages of emails. Uh, frankly, there was no a rule on doing that, apparently, before Obama. I was surprised to find that Colin Powell always had his own private uh, system. I, I don't have any idea what John Kerry does. Mm -hmm. I don't, uh, frankly, Norma, uh, I do very little of that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I use the phone to speak on. Okay, so you don't. <laughs> and to read. You don't have a private say, email address no. that you use. If I have one, I don't know what it is. I, if anybody ever saw an email from me, I don't know what they do with it. Uh, but I, I think Hillary Clinton is one of the hundred best lawyers in the country, certified by both people who keep track of those statistics. And, and she, she will certainly weather this storm when we find out that all of the secretaries of state have done the very same thing. Uh, I'm not sure how critical that issue is, but out of 55,000 emails, um, I, I'm sure they're going to have a very good idea of what she, what she writes. Right. But I, I want it to be open, I, and, no, and I think she does as well. Uh, transparency was great. She, um, I remember the... the uh, Clinton administration and everything they did was scrutinized up one side and down the other, right. including if you remember their their Christmas card list. Sure, sure. I can't imagine she's got a secret anywhere. So she should turn, continue to turn Absolutely. over the emails. If she's should got, she use it? My understanding is that's all she's got is those fifty-five thousand. If there are more, do it in a hurry. Yes. All right, so in our next hour, we talk about reform in Washington. Whether Ms. Slaughter plans to retire. And her last, uh, and she talks a little bit about her last opponent, Mark Assini. Who could be her next opponent? That's right. Too.